Hi everyone, welcome to video two for the Celosia Cross body bag. Um, we're going to start the exterior assembly uh, in this video. We're going to start by sewing our uh, rectangle ring connectors. So you should have two pieces with fusible woven interfacing. And we're going to start by pressing them in half, wrong sides together. And then I'll do the same for the second. Since they're really small pieces, I'm gonna do them both at once. Um, then you'll wanna open them up and you'll see a center crease. Now you're going to fold in each half towards that center crease, wrong sides together and press. And then do the same for the other half. And I'll do the same for the second one. Now I'm going to go over to the machine and I'm actually going to do four lines of stitching for each connector. So I want the, uh, I want the center to stay uh, down. I want these two sides to stay down. So I'm going to actually sew what we, along the center here, just to sew these two halves down, about one eighth of an inch from that center crease on both sides. And then I'm going to top stitch as well uh, along each of the outer edges with one eighth of an inch seam allowance. And I'll do that for both pieces. Okay, so the rectangle ring connectors are sewn. I'm not sure if you can see all four lines of stitching. Um, then you slip the rectangle ring connector through one of the rings and I'll just put a clip for now but you fold it so that the raw edges are inside and then you go over to your machine and you just base stitch the raw ends together. Do the same for the second. And once they're basted at the raw ends, you can set those aside for now. Um, next, we're going to work on our zipper. Okay, the zipper that we're going to be working with now is the front pocket zipper. So it's the shorter one, the 14 inch uh, pre-made zipper, or if you're using, um, if you're using zipper tape like me, it'll be 14 and a half inches. Now you're going to place one of these zipper tabs on your work surface, right side facing up. Place one end of your zipper. It doesn't matter if it's the, which end of the zipper it is. We're going to be attaching tabs to both sides. And then you place your zipper. So your, both of these are right side facing up. Then you place a second zipper tab, wrong side facing up. And, oops, I broke my pin. Then I'm just going to pin all the layers together. Then I'm gonna go over to my machine and I'm going to sew all of, all of these three layers together with half an inch seam allowance from the end of the zipper. Make sure that you backstitch at the beginning and the end. Once you've sewn uh, through all the layers, then you're going to press the zipper tabs away from the zipper. Along the front and the back. And then you'll want to go over to your machine and you're going to top stitch the seam allowance. Then you're going to repeat exactly the same steps and attach these two zipper tabs to the other end of your zipper. Okay, so we have zipper tabs at both ends of our front pocket zipper. Now we're going to need um, our front pocket lining piece. And uh, there's two pieces, mirror image. The piece that we want in this step is the one that has the, the corner on the left and the curved edge on the top right. 
So you're going to match the diagram here in step eight. And I want the, so here's, this is important. You want the zipper pull. So where the zipper, the end where the zipper will open, you want that here along the top left corner here. Um, so the, the zipper with the zipper tabs ends up being a little bit longer than the, this curved edge. So what you'll want to do is make sure that you have about the same amount of zipper tabs sticking out at both ends. And it's hard to find centers here because this is not a symmetrical side. So I can't fold and find centers. So you kind of have to um, place it loosely, see if it, it fits, but you really want to make sure that you have uh, an even amount of zipper, of zipper tab, sorry, uh, sticking out both ends. So that's, that's about right. So it, you should have about half an inch, five eighths of an inch. And then you'll want to clip this in place. So it does get a little bit more difficult to clip around the curved corner because you see your zipper tape wants to stick up. So it is sometimes easier if you do it this way. And then you can just make your fabric follow the curve of the zipper. And use a lot of clips at the corner. Now when you have it all clipped in place, you'll want to just base the zipper to the lining piece for now. You're not doing the final sewing. So I will go over to my machine and I'll just baste it in place with 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so the zipper is basted. Now when you're sewing, uh, when you're basting the zipper to this uh, edge, take your time, don't rush it. I pause like every two or three stitches and I readjust making sure that my zipper follows the rounded uh, edge of the, the lining piece. Now you're going to need your exterior piece. So this is your uh, exterior pocket piece and it should have the fusible fleece. And I don't know if you could see, but I have a gap there where I don't have any fleece. So you're gonna place these right sides together. First start by lining up these edges. So the one at the top corner here and the other edge here at the bottom. So you want these pieces to line up. Ignore the zipper tab. You're just paying attention to the lining and the exterior. And then I'm actually going to flip it this way just because it's easier. I'll use a lot of clips at the corner because again we want all of these edges here at the corner to be lined up perfectly so I use a lot of clips here Okay, so we have these all clipped together. Now I'm going to sew with one quarter inch seam allowance. Make sure that you backstitch at this corner where you're starting. Move your zipper pull out of the way as you're sewing because you, otherwise it will, sorry, that's my iron. It will um, cause some crooked stitching. So one quarter inch all the way until you get to this corner and then backstitch again. Okay, so all the layers are sewn together. Now I'm going to flip this so that my lining and my exterior are wrong sides together and I'm going to <clears throat> press them both away from the zipper I can't 
can be a little bit tricky to press the corner here. Like so, and then I'll flip it over and I press from the lining side as well. And it's important that they, the corners here, they line up nicely. Okay, so now I'm gonna go over to my machine and I'm going to top stitch the seam allowance with 1 8 of an inch seam allowance from the edge of that, the exterior piece. Okay, so once you've top stitched the seam allowance, now you'll need your second lining piece and you're going to line this up. And again, you're making sure that all of these edges line up and you clip first this top edge. And then you line up this bottom corner. Okay, so you want everything to be lined up. And then again, you're clipping everything in between. I like to flip the zipper and do it this way. I just find it a little bit easier. And again, same thing, use a lot of clips, especially around the corner. And we're not, we're just going to base this in place with 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. Start here. Okay, so I'm going over to my machine and I'm going to baste this in place with one eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so now I have two lining pieces and an exterior piece. Now you're going to take your front body piece. And again, you're repeating exactly the same thing, except, so this will be a little bit more tricky because you have curves that are going in the opposite direction, really. So what I do is I start again by lining up these pieces. And then I, so really what I'm doing is I just, I have these pieces follow their curves. And then I clip this corner. And I'll clip the rest in between. So it's easier this way if you have everything wrong side facing up for clipping. And again at the corner you want to add a lot of clips now normally if this was just fabric I would be uh, notching in the seam allowance but because I have a zipper I'm, I'm trying to avoid doing that uh, we don't want our zipper to come apart okay lots of clips here at the corner and then I'm going to go and sew all these layers together, this time with one quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, so we have all the layers together. This time you're going to press, and we want the seam allowance going down towards the pocket. And give it a little tug when you're doing it at the corner here. We're not going to, oh, there's a fault in my fabric. We're not going to top stitch this seam allowance. We're not going to do that, and you'll see why in a little bit. 
Okay, so now that we have this all together, you're going to take the remaining piece of foam and you're going to place this over top and make sure that you have, so these are the top rounded corners, these are your bottom corners, they're not as rounded. Um, they're more of a sharp corner. So start by placing the top edge and the lining up the top corners and clipping those all into place. And you can even do this side and this bottom corner here. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to have all the pieces at the bottom here line up with the bottom edge of the foam interfacing. So I start by lining up this bottom lining piece and then this second lining piece and then the bottom corner of your exterior and clipping that in place. And then you can flatten the, so you're, you're, what you're doing really is you're pushing the pocket up and you're in, you're folding your zipper tabs almost in half when you're doing that. And what that does is it creates a little bit of depth in your pocket. So I'm going to put another clip here. Okay, so one little tip I have is um, when you're going to be sewing this front panel to your gusset, it will get a little thick at the area where you have your zipper tabs. So if you want to reduce a bit of that bulk, you can actually cut a little portion. You don't want to cut too much. Uh, just maybe the area where you have the zipper tab and then seam allowance deep, so about three-eighths of an inch deep. Now my machine can handle the thickness, but just for those of you who might be concerned if you're using a domestic machine, uh, you might want to go ahead and do this step here. Now make sure you're just cutting the foam, nothing else. Okay, so once that is done, what I will do is I'm going to go over to my machine and I'm going to baste the foam to uh, this, the assembled front of my bag. Um, and then I think, oh yes, we will do the piping. So I will add the piping once I've basted this in place. Okay, so this is basted on and now you can trim the excess. Uh, zipper tabs. Now we're going to add our piping. So if you're using packaged piping, I'm going to start by cutting the piece in, in two. One for each of the panels, the front and the back. Sorry, iron going off. So, if you're not planning on using piping, you can actually stop the video here and continue on with the next one. But if you want to use piping, you can finish watching the end of this video. Oops. Now, I'm not going to cover making your own piping in this video. I really just want to show how I, I add it. Okay, so when I'm adding piping, um, on these panels I'm going to start and stop along the bottom edge. Um, when I'm adding piping, I don't, uh, I don't clip it to the uh, outer edge. What I usually do is I go over to my machine and I baste it in place and I, I bring a pair of scissors and when I get to the corners, I stop, I 
clip a little bit inside the seam allowance so that it it does the curve nicely otherwise uh, your you'll see here it, it starts to flip up so it's really important that you clip inside the seam allowance um, I am going to actually move over to the machine I'll move the camera over so that you can watch uh, how I, I based on the the piping okay so when you start sewing you're going to start at the bottom edge of the panel and you leave at least one inch that isn't sewn to the uh, the panel and we're just doing a basting stitch right now with 1 8 of an inch seam allowance so I've done a part of the bottom edge now I'm at a corner so at the corner what I like to do is just do some notches here in the seam allowance not too big and that just helps it sit nicely um, along the corner otherwise your the bias portion of your piping would be sticking straight up now obviously if you have a piping foot uh, it's a little bit easier because the foot goes over the cord isn't as sharp but I'm still gonna do a few notches just so that I know it light it's going to lie flat because it's a sharper corner. Okay, so here I want to um, trim the bias tape and I want to have an overlap. So I'm going to cut it here. Now there's a couple of ways to finish this. There's the easy way, which is to just curve both of them outwards, like so, and then um, have them finish. You could also uh, overlap them if you like, like so. Um, and then just finish basting. Um, if you want to get a little bit fancy, uh, what you can do is actually undo a portion. open it up and then do the same for this part so I want to open it up all the way up to here I'm trying to cheat and just pull it out but it's not coming out There we go. Okay, and then 
what you want to do is you want your your cord to stop at exactly start and stop at exactly the same spot. So I'm just going to trim it here. Just the cord, not the tape. Okay. And then you can close up this part again. I just wanted to be able to see my cord. And then you're going to take this portion and you're going to fold it so that there's no raw end. And then place this inside and then close this over like so. And then it gives you like a, a nicer finish where you're not curving or anything like that. I'll show you what it looks like once I'm done basting. So I say fancy, but probably this is the way that will give you the nicest finished. So, sorry, I'm very, my camera's very close here. I just want you to see close up what this looks like at the at the end. It's pretty much a, a seamless finish. Okay, so there's the piping along one panel and I'm going to do exactly the same thing uh, with the second panel and the extra piece of piping. Uh, that's the end of this video. In the next video, we're going to assemble our zipper panels.